Hey viewers, welcome to the fourth episode of the Gera 16 Modified Super Series Lead Up Shows. I'm Vince from Gera 16. I'm Aaron from Gera 16. And we've got a great show on for you today. What have we got on? Okay, so we got an extended interview. We went along to the Max Motors Wellington Family Speedway and filmed everything that you need to know about what happens at a speedway. Okay viewers, so as you might know, of course, the place that we're running this whole event from is the Max Motors Wellington Family Speedway, our partners in all of this, the people that have let us put this event on. So we jumped in the old Mitsubishi Cold mate, went down there and decided to do an interview and crikey, there's a lot involved. Well there's, there's definitely a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes at the Speedway and we were lucky enough to get shown around the Speedway to find out exactly what goes on behind the scenes and there was actually so much good stuff that we decided to do an extended interview on this episode, didn't we? Yeah, so, so many of you would have turned up to the Speedway, paid your money and watched the racing, but for those of you that ever wanted to know what goes on behind the scenes and what it takes to run a Speedway, that's what this show's all about. Thanks very much to our partners, the Max Motors Wellington Family Speedway. Oh, and the fans also need to watch out for some other stuff that's coming up this week on our social media pages, right? Yes, that's right, we've got lots of stuff always coming up on Facebook, Instagram and our website, but this week we've got something coming up on Facebook that we're going to give away, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Absolutely, make sure you get in and you enter and you take advantage of these prizes that are coming up. As it gets a bit closer to the competition, you're going to see more and more of those. But for now, here's episode four. Enjoy! Okay viewers, we're here at the Max Motors Wellington Family Speedway to have a bit of a talk about the Garage 16 Modified Super Series but also find out a little bit about what makes a Speedway tick and in order to do that we have the Vice President for the Wellington Speedway here, we've got Aaron Musgrove, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me, I'm happy to be here. Okay, so we came to the Wellington Family Speedway and we pitched this idea of running the Modified Super Series this year. I take it that fits into the ethos of Speedway a little bit, giving giving people a go and um, and anything to promote your sport, right? Oh, 100%, and, and we loved the idea when you came to us with it, it was fantastic and there's nothing better than seeing someone else get in behind the sport and really drive a class to, to get ahead and, and create something something quite spectacular and quite different for, for the whole sport and around the country. So it was, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a really easy decision for us and, um, and yeah, we're really, really grateful to have you guys on board. In terms of the actual event itself, we've, um, we believe we've got, got quite a good lineup. What are you, what's your thoughts on the series so far and the drivers that we've attracted and how do you think things are going to go? Well, as in anyone that's been seen modifieds before, you get a big field of modifieds together and it's spectacular. That, that's, that's one of the fastest forms of racing. It's, it's, really is something special. So to be able to get you know big numbers of drivers and the best of the best from around the country all down in one place running over that series it's going to be it's going to be quite magical to watch. The fans are going to be in for a huge treat on uh, on the opening night obviously with uh, the first round being on the same night as fireworks which is a huge huge night for the track and um, we're going to be really treating those uh, those fans on that night with the uh, first round of the series. I do believe it's the only um, public fireworks show in the Wellington region this, this season. You've got that dead right. Uh, we are the only public fireworks in, uh, in the lower North Island so that's it's going to be it's going to be a huge night for the track so we're really pumped about it. We're going to be starting early as well it happens to be the same night as uh, the mighty All Blacks take on the uh, final of the Rugby World Cup so we're really looking forward to uh, seeing them win after, uh, after the meeting so we're going to be having a 6pm start that night to uh, make sure that we can get all of our fans home in time for that World Cup final. Excellent, oh, that's really good. So, hope to see you all here for that for sure. So, tell us a little bit about the um, about the history. Where did everything kind of start for the track here? So, we last year actually celebrated our 50th season uh, at the Max Motors Wellington Family Speedway. Uh, we've been a club run track for our entire history, which means that it's run by a group of volunteers, basically. everyone uh, Everyone's doing this for the love. Um, we've got a strong committee uh, that's elected from the club. 
um, which build, builds the, the meetings, builds the track, builds the venue and, and helps keep, keep the track going. The track 50 years ago was uh, predominantly a stock car track, um, which is where most of Speedway started around the country, stock car and saloons. Uh, they were sort of the first two main classes and then uh, obviously branching out into your modifieds and, and uh, solo bikes and yeah, across, across the years. Uh, it's growing and growing from what was just a dirt oval with some drums and some wires to uh, now a multi-million dollar facility that's, uh, that's you know, from club run perspective, one of the, one of the better ones in, in the country. Sweet. And um, as the viewers will hopefully already know, and if you don't, we've got the modified Super Series that's on on the 2nd of November, the 23rd of November, and the 11th of January, but I'm sure the Speedway's got a whole heap of other stuff planned throughout the season. You want to give us a bit of an overview of some of the highlights that everyone's got coming up here? Well, we've got a huge season this season. In fact, we're running uh, 18 meetings over the season, wow. which is one of our biggest seasons in history. Uh, we've got Four national titles, um, including the Super Saloons, uh, Saloon Cards, both running the North Island Champs. We've got the New Zealand Super Modified Champs, partnered with you guys again with Garage 16 Media. We've got New Zealand Street Stop Grand Prix with Panhead. It's, it's going to be a massive, absolutely massive season. We're also backing up, bringing back a few of the crowd favourites with uh, Capital Pools. We run an ultimate knockout with the stock cars, big pairs competition that's got major damage for one night. <laughs> uh, and then obviously the, the G16 Modified Super Series, which is going to be a brilliant jewel on the crown this season. Absolutely, so definitely want the viewers supporting the Modified Super Series, but it sounds like there is a huge amount of stuff on offer at the Max Motors Wellington Family Speedway. So make sure you check out the dates, make sure you check out their social media. Okay, Aaron, so as you mentioned, there is a lot of people involved in terms of, um, in terms of running a speedway. So do you want to just give us a little bit of an insight into um, how things go, sort of from, uh, from the top all the way through to the people that help out on the night? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so obviously the, being elected from our club members, uh, every year we have an AGM where we elect uh, the, the committee or the governing body of the, of the track. Uh, currently we've got Chris Hadley, who's uh, one of our long-standing presidents. He's uh, into his I think, sixth or seventh year in a row. Um, currently vice president. Then we've got uh, Mike Eckersley, who's a good saloon um, man, been with the club many, many years, and he's our, our treasurer. Uh, and one of our life members, Belinda Robertson, um, who's the club secretary. So that forms up the, the executive. Then got club captain, um, who's Dan, he's first year in the seat this year. They're in charge of making sure that you know, we're, we're really representing the views of our club members. And then down into our, our committee, we've got a, a great committee of, of half a dozen um, people from all different walks of, of Speedway, so different classes, different genres, uh, all there representing, giving up their time, um, and it's, it's a huge time commitment to, to be able to put on a meeting or but also in the off season to actually keep the track running and keep the lights on. So, um, and then down into we've got a huge team of volunteers that, that come every weekend to, you know, work on the pit gate, make sure that the tow trucks are enabled, you know, really just make the meeting run. Um, so it is, it's, it's a, you know, you need a, an entire village to, to put on a meeting <laughs> and um, for us to be able to go out and race the sport that we love so much. I assume there's probably different ways that people become a life member of the, of the Speedway? Yeah, so to be able to become a life member, you, you've got to be a, um, put forward by someone and uh, that's within the club. Uh, and then everyone votes on it in an AGM, so it's, it's a huge deal to become a life member. Uh, we've got quite a, a handful of life members that from over the years have really crafted the track and, and to, to them, big thank you, they've, they've really made our club what it is today. So it's, it's a major achievement. You obviously have um, various forms of, of being able to come to the Speedway. You can, either, you, you can either buy your tickets online or just turn up on the night. How do you go about being part of the uh, Max Motors Wellington Family Speedway Club, effectively? So for, for anyone that's wanting to join the club, we actually have uh, three different tiers of membership. Obviously a racing member, who's someone who's racing, and you have to have a club membership to be able to, uh, to race. Uh, we've got a non-racing club member, um, that's for a lot of ex-drivers or you know family that wants to be involved and, and wants to help with the running of the club. Uh, and then we've also got a, a club rooms membership, which obviously being a club and, and having a, uh, a club rooms where everyone likes to have a quiet drink afterwards, um, that helps just with our bar licence. Uh, from a track perspective, uh, any of the fans that want to come along, we've actually, for the first season uh, ever this time, we are allowed to sell season passes, which have uh, been hugely popular for those fans that really love coming every week. Uh, we get big saving, 20% off the, the retail price of our 
biggest season to date, so it's, it's really a no-brainer. Magic, so go to the Max Motors Wellington Family Speedway website. Those season passes are there, are there and they're available. So the next thing I'd like to move on is more of a, more of a logistical thing. Um, uh, Speedway is a summer event and it relies on good weather and all of that sort of stuff. So, and I do believe you're one of the people that are involved in that decision-making yes. process when it comes to a Saturday if the weather's looking a bit dodgy. Yep. <laughs> that must be a stressful thing, right? <laughs> oh, so, so there's nothing worse than having a look at the, the weather forecast during the week, seeing what Saturday's gonna look like. How, how many times do you reckon you would look at the weather forecast? Oh, the I've got maybe a dozen different apps <laughs> and, and you're scrolling through and you're like looking for the one that's got the good weather forecast to help you believe in what's gonna happen on the weekend. And we've got that horrible situation that, um, as you mentioned, it, it costs a lot to run a speedway and, yep. and we need our fans to be bums on seats to be able to open the gates. Yep. And so for us to be able to put on a good meeting and, and effectively keep the lights on, uh, we've got to be able to provide fans with what they're after, which is not running on a night when it's raining. Yep. Um, so we've got to make a call during the day, obviously it helps our out of town drivers as well, which stops them from traveling if, if we're going to postpone, because the last thing we want to do is upset any of our, you know, our, our driver support, because yep. you know, they, they are the reason that people are here. So it's, it's a huge call and it's always, you know, you get one or two wrong in a season where you'll say, we're going to call it and then Upper Hutt has this wicked little microclimate. Where yeah, it's got its own ecosystem, yeah, doesn't it? And the sun yeah. comes out and you're like, oh no, I can't believe we did it this time. But, you know, we're always trying to act in the best interests of both the fans and the drivers. And um, yeah, it's never an easy decision. Yep. Um, we always do try and call it as early as possible to allow those those drivers that are coming from, from far afield to to go to their home track or go to another track and, and still get their racing in in the weekend. Sweet, and, and, and it is very much, um, it's a safety thing and there's various reasons, but um, one of the biggest deciding factors I assume would be the track itself, obviously racing on the dirt, um, uh, you need water, <laughs> yeah. but it's gotta be controlled, right? So yep. you, you can't let the weather control what happens on that track well, if it's uh, coming down. Well, 100%, we've, uh, we've had a few meetings here where there's, the track's been underwater, we would have been better off racing jet boats than racing. <laughs> <laughs> the racing speedway cars it's been it's been deep but not only that it, once that dries out if it's uh, you know if it's in the afternoon and, and it's uh, that much underwater even if the weather comes right it just ends up a mud bowl which which isn't good for anyone until sort of the last couple of races of the night when it, you do get a perfect track by that point but yeah there's, it's a really really fine balance and we've got a good team that's involved with the part of the committee as the track committee and um, they're all over that side of so of making sure that we get a good track for the drivers. Um, tell us a little bit, if someone was um, someone was watching this or, or watching Speedway or had been sitting in the grandstands for, for a long time thinking, Jeepers, this is something that I'd really want to do, what, what's a good pathway into actually getting into racing uh, in Speedway? Yeah, well, that's a great question. There's two really sort of simple, I'd say, first steps to if you're looking to go racing. One is, especially at Wellington, we offer open pits. Um, obviously, be safe. We're always, always about safety, but uh, if you're safely going down in the pits and um, talking to the drivers, especially before the meeting while, they, while they're getting, you know, they're waiting for the meeting to start, uh, they're always more than accommodating and happy to talk to anyone about what, what it takes to become a driver or cars or really let you get close up close and personal. Uh, and the other way, if, you, if you're not so confident of going down and sort of start striking up a conversation with a guy in a helmet, is um, just email the track. We're, we're more than happy to put people in contact with, uh, with other drivers or, or mentors or some of the you know, life members of the club that have got great roads in for, for everyone from our awesome youth, the 12 and 13 year olds of the club, right the way through to, you know, we've got some, some uh, elderly statesmen that, that still race. So, yep. so there's, it's never, never too late to, to get involved. Yeah, and all ages, all demographics, um, de definitely not something, it's not a sport that provides a lot of hurdles. Um, and um, and there's also avenues to get into Speedway where you you know you don't need to spend an astronomical budget in every single class. Yep. It is the sort of sport that you can get into on a reasonable budget, yep. find out if it's what you want, and then decide where you're going to climb to in your career from that yeah, point, right? Correct. Yeah. I mean, across all of the classes, uh, there's some of our classes where you can get in for as little as fifteen hundred or two grand in like street stocks. Um, and go racing for an entire season and, and just have some fun. Um, right up until your, you know, your modifieds and your super stocks and super saloons, that, that, that's really at the, the point end of the field where you know, they're talking big, big dollars with engines and tyres and, and travel, lots of travel around the country and it's, that's where you're at the, uh, the, I guess the other end of the scale. 
But within all the middle classes, you've got you both. You've got people that are racing on big budgets with, with big sponsorships, or you know, racing on backyard budgets, and they do everything out of their garage. But it's really just about having fun and, and going out there and putting on a good show for everyone. Speedway, it has a large following. It is definitely, it's definitely a valuable marketing asset for businesses out there potentially to um, come and sign on, whether it, whether you're sponsoring a driver or, or, or coming directly for track sponsorship and things like that. It can be quite beneficial for businesses, right? Yeah, yeah we would be one of the uh, most watched sports as far as bums on seats. Mm -hmm. um, obviously running quite regularly in, in Wellington yeah. um, versus something like rugby where you know you might get one or two games a season and we're running 18 times so uh, we get 30 to 40,000 people through a, a season yep. um, this year obviously will be slightly more than that given we've got so many more meetings and so many more national titles yeah. uh, which is, is great uh, so yeah if, if you are a sponsor and looking to get involved again same sort of channels either talk to a driver directly um, as you see they're moving billboards out on the track and everybody's watching them and People like these awesome guys have got cameras on them, um, so you, you can get pretty far afield. And the, the fan base that comes in with, with Speedway is very loyal. They're, they're very loyal to your track, very loyal to drivers, and, and could subsequently be to the businesses that are involved. It's very much a family a family atmosphere um, and event as well. I mean, it's in your name. Yep, um, <laughs> and, and I assume it's in your name potentially for that exact reason. This is this is a welcoming place to all comers, right? Yeah, 100%. We uh, actually, uh, we survey our crowd every year to, to find out who's coming along so that we can better pitch uh, our events to those people and make sure that we're really catering for what the fans are after. Uh, we're over half of our, our spectators are all coming as a family. Uh, versus, I guess, the stereotype that, that follows a motorsport. Um, we're also, if you go through our social media, we're very engaged with, with Facebook and Instagram, and, and our Facebook's actually uh, has, has a heavily female skew. We're, we've got a lot of female fans, which is great, and um, and obviously the sport now is, is, we've got some of our best drivers around the country. Yeah, more and uh, more female fe drivers coming to the sport. awesome to see. It's fantastic to see, and um, especially in Wellington. In fact, they are one of our committee members, and uh, last year's top points for stock cars, uh, Desiree, she, um, she's a fantastic driver and another great, great thing to see coming up through our sport. So that's a little bit about the nuts and bolts. What we're going to do now is we're going to go and have a bit of a look around your, your amazing facility and um, see what makes this place tick. So up behind us we've got race control. That's where all the paperwork's done, where all the guys have to sign in, where pretty much everything happens from. Obviously on the left hand side of that we've also got the commentary box. Uh, which we'll take you inside in a minute and show you around there. Uh, but this is where really all the, uh, the the big stuff happens. This is where the club uh, runs the event from. And he's coming around the corner. And, uh, <laughs> uh, so this, this is where the announcers all sit. Uh, they pull straight out the window. Got one of the better views in the house where obviously they need to be able to see everyone on the track. Um, we've usually got a couple of commentators in here with lists. They've got uh, unofficial race results coming up on their screen, so that way they know who's calling and what's going on at any given time. And, uh, and obviously they can shout out and, and, and call it as they see it. So just over behind us, we've got the Demon Bridge. This was new for us this season. Uh, we had to cover over our pit chute to add some safety for our spectators that wanted to get all the way around the track. Uh, just over on the other side of there, we've got where the SNZ uh, run their infield part of the meeting. Oh, yeah. from. Do you want to go have a look? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we're in the ELS room, so um, Aaron, tell us a little bit about what goes on in here, mate. So this is where all of our lap scores sit that actually negotiate how many laps anyone's done and basically post the result. So here we have where the manual lap score sits. Now this is where the sport originally started 50 years ago, that somebody literally just calling the numbers of the cars as they go past into a tape recorder or writing them down. Nowadays we use this as a backup to make sure that if the electronic lap score goes down, we've got a tried and tested method to always get the right result. He's come over here, this is the electronic lap scoring. Uh, we've got a team that sits in here, watches the cars come across, make sure that you know, if someone's gone over and spun over the line that we're not recording them as two laps. Uh, and that's done through transponders that are mounted to the vehicles. And uh, about half a metre underneath the track, we've got a, a strip that goes under that records everyone that goes past. Once the race results are printed, 
The team post them through the wall to the Speedway New Zealand control box so that they can verify and make sure that nobody needs to be relegated or there isn't any issues with the results. We'll take you there now. Okay, Aaron, so tell us a bit about this important wee room here. Right, so this is where race control sits for Speedway New Zealand. They look out through these windows looking for infractions happening on the track. They also control all of the lights, which is done from this little control unit here, where you can see that they turn on the greens, the reds, the oranges. Uh, and they also sit up here with the driver's reps to make sure that if there is any infractions that go on, they can pass that back down to the drivers. Sweet. And is this also the, um, the place the drivers come to um, if there's a protest or if someone's been a little bit naughty? Yes, it is indeed. This, so, is, uh, this is the box that you never want to be in. Excellent. Uh, but it's, yeah, if, that, if there is a major issue or that they need to give a warning to one of the drivers, um, they are brought up here to, to be served with that warning. Sweet. So I imagine there's been some very interesting conversations in this room over time. I'm sure there probably <laughs> has been. I'm, I'm happy to not be privileged to any of them. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so this is the business end of things, obviously. This is where all the action happens, and um, and I assume it's something that doesn't just happen, right? No, so. it certainly doesn't. So obviously in the off-season, uh, all the track gets ripped up. Um, we, we, our track's based on a riverbed, so there are quite a few rocks quite deep down. So it gets goes through and gets screeded, where they crush all the rocks down into tiny little bits so that they don't get flung out of the crowd, because obviously that's not, you know, we've got safety as number one. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, new material needs to be added. As you can imagine, every week cars take a whole lot of it home and put yep. it on their driveways. And, uh, and yeah, so we have new material being brought in uh, to, to really compact down the surface and, and make for a good racing track. Obviously with this season, with having the modified Super Series and a couple of other big wheel, big wheel titles, um, the track's being laid uh, in a manner that's going to support really uh, really good fast racing. Okay Aaron, so you've been involved in Speedway for quite a long time, tell us a little bit about your Speedway journey yourself. Yeah, so my uh, my family, my father was involved in the Speedway way back in, uh, in, in the 80s. Uh, he was captain of the Wildcats team years oh, and years cool. ago, he actually was on the committee as well at one stage. Um, so we've yeah, got long routes back in the, in the Wellington Speedway. Um, I raced a little bit of time in stock cars um, with the Hut Park racing team. Um, so I ran a stock car, did a bit of teams racing and then uh, in, the, in the last few years got uh, got drafted into the committee to come help with some marketing and promotion as that's my, my background. That should be right and, uh, and yeah, and here we are sort of, you know, that passion never dies. So yep. you're all, absolutely. You're always involved. Okay, well that concludes our interview with Aaron and the Max Motors Wellington Family Speedway. Thank you very much for joining us and, um, and we look forward to an ongoing partnership and we look forward to what's hopefully going to be a really, really awesome Garage 16 Modified Super Series. Make sure you're there. So once again to Max Motors Wellington Family Speedway, thanks for showing us around and we look forward to launching the Modified Super Series with you on the 2nd of November. Absolutely. So hopefully for you viewers that was all nice and informative and um, but also keep your eyes out. Um, we've got episode 5 coming up in another week or two and that one's going to be quite good. We've, uh, we've got one of the superstars of the sport, or well, one of the new superstars of the sport on that show mate. Yes we do, it's the one and only, literally the one, 1NZ Luke Brown and we're very excited to interview him so make sure you stick around for episode 5 coming in a couple of weeks. Yeah, and, uh, and we're also back to uh, creating a little bit of shenanigans with a few more fun games and challenges for the drivers so keep your eyes out for that. Thanks for watching, thanks for supporting and we'll see you next time. Cheers!